he was in complete and utter like over the moon that I was pregnant with my last one, with Bella. When she was born, he came into the room and he was just, this is my baby. This is my little girl. He and Sophie, my daughter Sophie, who's 19, they were almost five years apart, but they were really close. Sasha, our third child, with a little bit of a puppy dog following Nikki around. He was uh, super smart, inquisitive, athletic, funny. He wasn't completely open and unafraid to be himself. I mean, I can't even ever say I thought anything would hit our family, a disease would hit our family, would hit one of my kids. He had been at a sleepover and eaten a lot of pizza and stayed up late and the next day was experiencing some abdominal pains. I sent him to school, but I saw him in the schoolyard at lunchtime and he was just doubled over and of course I grabbed him right away. We went to Chio. Never once did I ever think it was anything more than a, a gastrointestinal <laughs> something. And I remember standing in line with a woman that I knew from the Glebe and her, she was there with one of her kids and you know later on it turns out her child has the flu and goes home and my kid has cancer. <laughs> it's hepatocellular carcinoma. You never ever are prepared for something like that. Going through 10 or 12 cycles of chemo and he went through an experimental surgery to try to save his life, which was a double um, transplant. My husband donated a portion of his liver. That was quite successful and the liver grafted. And then a month later, a stem cell transplant. But because his immune system was so suppressed, uh, he picked up a virus in the hospital, something that even a healthy person probably would have had a very difficult time fighting off. And he, he couldn't, they, they tried every antibiotic and he passed away. Liver disease, yeah, you do assume it's an older person. You, you have to be on the planet for a while and abuse your liver before it starts to scar. It's, it's luck of the draw. When Nikki's only chance at survival seemed to be the liver transplant and stem cell transplant, we knew that we would be facing a situation where one of us in our family would have to donate a liver to Nikki. The Liver Foundation got in touch with us and we were introduced to Trina Morissette who had been a living donor for her mother. And she came and met our family, um, talked with us, and in particular with our daughter Sophie because when we were going through the process of, of matching, um, our daughter Sophie happened to be a 100% match to Nikki. So Trina gave her special attention, took her out, talked to her, talked about her concerns, talked about the process, talked about the aftermath, and formed a friendship with her and, and with our family. It turned out that the hospital in New York wouldn't allow Sophie to be a donor because she was too young. The Liver Foundation can completely give a person who has to be in this situation so much information about not only the physical aspect of having a liver transplant, but the aftermath. And the aftermath can sometimes be more um, grueling than the surgery because if it's a success, wonderful. But if it's not, my husband lives every day with that scar that reminds him of the surgery that wasn't a success. Trina and Annette Martin came to Nikki's funeral. They, they've, um, they went be beyond, you know, being a, 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 a an organization that, that uh, it's, a, it's an actual organization in the community dealing with personal lives. And that to me is, is amazing.
I taught for some 15 years, always done very well, and at one point, pretty much anything that the kids brought into the classroom, I came down with it, and not only I come down with it, but I couldn't get rid of it. I was extremely tired. I didn't have any energy, not the energy that I was used to having. So that's at the point where I realized that something was quite wrong. Within six months, they had me diagnosed with um, a liver disease. Primary biliary cirrhosis is an autoimmune disease. It affected my liver, which caused blockage of the bile ducts, which caused cirrhosis of the liver. In March of 2007, the liver specialist started making plans for talking to us about a transplant. We as a family decided that we were going to go with the living donor. It was a very difficult decision at that point. I knew that my sons wanted to go first to be tested and that as a mother, you certainly don't want to see one of your children having to go through that process. Together, they just decided that Sean would go first. He just felt that he was strong enough and uh, he was determined that he could do this. And we never had to go any further than Sean because when he went through the testing, he was compatible and he was very willing. So that's where the process stopped. They were going to be taking 50% of Sean's liver, removing all of my liver, and transplanting his liver into, into me. And because we all know that the liver is an organ that regenerates itself, then it would be a full-grown liver for me down the road, and the same for Sean. It was amazing. I woke up from surgery and I can't explain it, but I felt so fresh. Like I was just, I don't know, there was something in me that I woke up and it was like, oh, wow. I felt great. I knew I had my life back right away. We had our transplant at Christmas time, and Sean was born Christmas Day. Sean was 19 when he um, decided that he was going to uh, be my donor. And he turned 20 that year, and uh, to think that 20 years earlier, I gave him life, and at that time, it was 20 years later, he was giving life back to his mother. 